am not an expert on this subject, um, but I am looking to gain insight by forums such as this, as well as look at it into the effects um, on it from an economic development standpoint, health justice, reviews, um, as well as experts. Um, I am becoming better versed on the topic from all different perspectives. Uh, different perspectives. Um, the one thing I wanted to just share, though, uh, recently that I read um, was in the Open Medicine Journal that was called Improving Community Health and Safety in Canada Through Evidence-Based Policies on Illegal Drugs. Um, it was written by uh, Dr. Evan Wood as well as company. Um, and as a strong believer in building evidence-based policies, uh, one of the things that the journal looked um, to was the impact of cannabis on drug law enforcement, as well as looking into current models that have used to reduce harm. Um, and to further note the journal, I couldn't agree more with the fact that our society, um, and especially even uh, the Vancouver Race community, would benefit on a reconstruction of its policies on addiction and take a high consideration of addiction as a health issue rather than primarily a criminal justice issue. Um, in Vancouver East, becoming an advocate for drug policy reform is important. Um, the journal mentioned that uh, there was an Angus Reid poll that estimated that 50% of Canadians have already recently um, shown their support for the legalization of cannabis. Um, it also mentioned, and I did want to sort of make it clearly understood that marijuana itself is not necessarily free from its harm, but um, reviews do suggest that it is less harmful than tobacco um, and alcohol, as well as a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs that are currently out there being prescribed. Um, we're all sort of aware of the continuous widespread availability of cannabis, and as well as the crime and violence that exists secondary to the prohibition of this drug. And there is a need for a strong discussion about what will be the best practice, or as the journal said, an optimal regulatory strategy so that we can reduce harms of cannabis use while also uh, reducing unintended policy attributable consequences, such as like organized crime that is emerging under prohibition. Uh, one of the last points that the journal made was in 2005, um, as a part of the renewal of Canada's national drug strategy, a national consultative process led by Health Canada and the Canadian Centre on Substance Abuse culminated um, in a national framework for action to reduce the harms that are associated with drugs in Canada. In 2007, the federal government abandoned this framework altogether in favor of a new anti-drug strategy, which removed the support for the evidence-based harm reduction program, such as the one that we have currently in like, sight. Uh, the new strategy has also supported various drug use prevention measures that have actually proven completely ineffective. And lastly, obviously, the more recent plans to enact costly mandatory minimum sentences for drug law violations, which highlight a complete departure from evidence-based policy making. Um, in terms of being able to keep this discussion um, ongoing, um, I, I do encourage everyone that is here to, you know, spread the word to at least one or two friends, and so that we can start multiplying and we can continuously have these open discussions. Um, I wanted to just touch very briefly on just the process of regulation because I do think it's going to be a conversation in itself and it's one that I'm actually looking right now to get further educated about. So if anyone either has someone or even the panel is here that I can even speak to so that I can chair a roundtable discussion and we can just sort of keep these conversations going and actively, um, actively out there. Um, the last point I wanted to make was just as a liberal candidate um, in Vancouver East and, and definitely an active member of the community, I did want to take the opportunity to mention that there are also just a lot of and a multiple number of topics that need to be of discussion. And in wake of the federal budget that was just being presented, I hope that everyone recognizes that the conservative government that currently is in place right now is not being honest about the services that are going to be affected by the billions that they are promising to cut. The agenda including the omnibus crime bill, the cuts to OAS, uh, the failure to invest in infrastructure, it's going to impose growing costs on provinces and territories and municipalities. And I also hope that we're going to continue to talk about the legalization of marijuana as well as not also overshadow some of the other major issues that are out there that are threatening pillars of Canadian life like health care and pension and affordable housing. And of course, as some people in the room know affordable housing is one of my main focuses. I do want to just 
quickly mention that you know this government right now is creating a world of uncertainty um, about the federal government's role in affordable housing in the future, and the budget is offering absolutely no funding um, or new funding, and any of this existing funding right now is going to expire in two years. Um, anyways, having said that, I think the rest of the forum, I'm going to turn over to the panelists, and I'm really looking forward to um, gaining that insight and becoming more knowledgeable um, on this, and I encourage, again, everybody to go out there, have some more discussions, engage in online conversations so that we can start multiplying the amount of people that are showing up, and also um, expose yourself to research and expose yourself to science so that when the next election is about to come back, um, we're going to be able to take back this country um, and put a government in place that does actually, in fact, believe in evidence-based policies.